I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the new Hyundai i30 sedan. Yes, an i30 sedan, which now replaces the Elantra in Hyundai's lineup as their smallest four-door sedan here in Australia. Now that's the end of a long line for the Elantra, which is one of this brand's longest running nameplates, but I'd say i30 is probably a lot more recognizable these days in Australia and a little bit more modern as well. And so's the car that that badge now sits on because rather than simply being a facelift of the Elantra, this is actually a new model sitting on a new platform and with new engines. In fact, under this bonnet, there's a new two litre Smart Stream MPI engine. So not the same two litre direct injected unit that you'll find in the hatchback but later on there'll also be a hotter version in the form of a turbocharged n-line that we can't show you just yet but this one is going to become quite familiar on Australian roads I think and there'll be no missing the new i30 sedan on the road because it wears this really distinctive design which Hyundai are calling parametric dynamics but to me it's really based all around these triangle motifs it's a little bit hard to see some of the details in this black car which is actually the vehicle used to tune the i30 sedan specifically for Australia but now that the camo is off we can see the really nice dark chrome that's used to accentuate some of this car's more interesting angles and you know I think in person it comes together really well although it can look a little bit interesting in photos and perhaps the video you're watching now but you can let me know what you think of this vehicle's design down below in the comments box but today what we're going to do is jump inside the i30 sedan check out the interior and how practical this vehicle is and then sum up our thoughts before taking it out onto the road later this year so to make sure you don't miss that video make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell below it really does make a difference all right let's jump inside Jumping into the i30 sedan, and it's pretty clear we're not in a 94 Hyundai Excel anymore, or even in the outgoing Elantra, because this new i30 sedan is a major step forward in both design sophistication and also in quality, though not this specific car, because this is a pre-production unit that's been used to evaluate and test different suspension setups here in Australia. We do have some weird quirks like these plastics here, and down here and on the dash that aren't gonna make it to the final car. So don't stress over that. But almost everything else is how it'll be in vehicles that are delivered to Australian customers. And that starts with this lovely new steering wheel. Love how it has this split spoke design, looks really futuristic, feels good in the hand, nice delicate little hub. Looking forward onto twin digital screens, it actually looks a bit like the cluster out of the new Mark 8 Volkswagen Golf, but they are really easy to use. We've got a touchscreen over here, 10 and a quarter inch, another 10 and a quarter inch digital display in front of you. It's really high res, really crisp, and it lets you divide your content into three different panels, or you can use wired Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. We have plenty of buttons down here for your key functionality, climate, heated and ventilated seats on this high spec but non-sporty variant, and also some cool flourishes like this broad air vent with blue ambient lighting. Looks good, works pretty easily. Now this grab handle down here won't be to everybody's tastes, but it's certainly kind of sporty in a 1980s sort of way. And we sit in, you know, pretty comfy seats. They got lots of side bolstering, you know, that's made of leather and, you know, black in this car, electric adjustment for the driver with two position memory. And this car also moves to Bose premium audio in a break with the traditional infinity system that you get in Hyundai's. Plus practicality is good. We got wireless phone charging in front of the shifter, big cup holders, a bin between the seats that's nice and deep and large door bins as well. So up front, it's a good step forward. I like it, looking forward to driving it. Let's check out what it's like in the back. Here in the back of the new i30 sedan, the biggest contrast to the popular hatchback version is one of space because there's lots of it here in the four-door. For myself, it's six foot. I've got pretty okay headroom, even though we have a bit of a sloping, fastback-ish roofline in this vehicle, but legroom's where it really counts. We've got a longer wheelbase than the hatch, and that translates into heaps of space back here for adult passengers. Tow room is pretty fine as well. And we do have the return of the weird pre-production plastic. Don't worry yourself too much about that. We do have a range of other nice special features. We have heated seats here in the back, which is amazing that that is now a feature in a Hyundai i30. We've got a flip down armrest with two cup holders and we also have air vents. No word yet on whether they're standard across the range, but good to see them here. Pretty comfy in the back too. All right, let's have a quick look at the boot. 
Here around the back, the really extroverted design of the new i30 sedan is on display and in full force. And even though this car is black, which makes it kind of hard to see design elements, there's no missing it given the full width LED running light here around the back that comes on whenever the headlights or the parker lights are switched on. And I'm personally a bit of a fan of this new trend of like a 2020s reincarnation of the 80s heck blender but now lit i think it makes these cars look really defined on the road but you can let me know again whether or not this is something you're into down below now the final version will have badging here at the rear this one's kind of debadged looks kind of cool and kukari but we do have this downwards facing or inclined hyundai badge here Below that is the little button to open up the lid, revealing 474 litres of space. Now, it's a really large cavernous boot, and that kind of figure really takes it up to where mid-size sedans were just a generation ago, so very, very practical. We do have these tabs to drop down the back seats from here in the boot, but otherwise it's a fairly basic space. As you can see, kind of exposed hinges, not really any extra areas for storage, but beneath that boot floor, we do have a spare wheel. And then it's simply a matter of closing up that tailgate and jumping into the driver's seat, which we'll be doing in just a couple of months' time when this car is ready to launch in Australia. Movement to an all-new platform and some new engines aside, we're not anticipating major changes in where the i30 sedan will be positioned in Australia compared to the outgoing Elantra. This is still going to be the slightly more practical four-door alternative to the popular and familiar i30 hatchback. Of course, the incoming N-Line variant will add a bit of spice, similar to the way the Elantra Sport currently sits in the market. No word yet on whether the six-speed manual that's offered on that car will be retained, but the automatic is very likely to be the seven-speed dual-clutch currently used in line with a 1.6-litre turbocharged petrol engine, whereas the mainstays of the range will be using this new 2-litre SmartStream MPI unit that produces 117 kilowatts of power, so pretty close to the 2-litre GDI in the i30 hatchback, but not direct injected. So we'll have to wait and see how this thing drives, but the newer platform is also likely to be a little bit more rigid, and of course the fact that it has been tuned in Australia, it's been given a total... Uh, program of attention to detail like most Hyundais that come to this country in terms of its suspension, damping, handling, steering. So it should be a good fit for our local roads and we'll know the answer to all of those questions later in 2020. So those are our initial observations of the 2020 Hyundai i30 sedan. I think this is a really distinctive small car. There's no missing it on the road. And I think that that advancement in design is really good for a vehicle like this to just help it stand out. And the interior is a big upgrade over the Elantra in my mind. But what do you reckon about the new i30 sedan? Let me know your thoughts down below this video. While you're there, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.